this season on Kev Fatu. Who is engaging them too? No. Fatu. I am not at liberty to say yes or no. Oli. For us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon, to make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Stewart & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart & Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, whether student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com When we touch down, but I broke down. With Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Can't do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. Every young Gambian dream of a university degree. He wants a good paying job after graduation, a pretty wife, and ultimately own a dream home. What if I can't afford my Zaya dream home? And that is why you need to visit Universal Properties. We specialize in customer satisfaction. We listen to every of our clients' needs when we sold the properties to our client. Before you know it, you hear the client saying, I like this house. This is the room that cuts my heart. And most of the time, they cling to the door never to let go. 
Most clients want to close the deal right there. And that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars. We work at our client's pace. No haggle, no hassle. We're waiting for you at our office in Cairoba Avenue here in the Gambia. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, school, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Sampa, Dena, Dede, Dede, the Moyo Nun, Mosier One hundred thousand dollars. Laila, Hila, Tayo Haman is some of Papa of America. Yo, Dagado, Yo, Hamgal, Louis, one hundred thousand dollars. Nago, Mana, you bogun, the money. Demo, Nagadef, 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 Maniki Lokal, Unimadal, Chiloto Gaming Gambi Lalal, Darna, Lal Natiludi. Well, I'm going to am a quarte, I'm Kente, I'm Chersey. Well, Manam Taiji, Kente Billa. The jackpot be pass a high Kente Moilan, Kente Manam Mojurumi Fassi. Wow, Manenbi, I'm a quarte, my moignant Fassi. A Chersey, yeah. Tena Kals Bidal Gano York. Look at jackpot bullet and Kartega Chibi, Manam Jurumi Fassi Boko Japes or. Moy risque. Désordre, ça défait. Ah, vous m'avez dit. Moi, je ne sais pas. 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 Je ne Chenan, lumu got got fifty thousand dollars. Why? Eh eh, Cherno, Cherno, Cherno. Who will I be last? Look at you. Some people get there. Some some people get look at it. Fifty hundred thousand dollars. I know you're born again. You don't see the money you need. I'm not going to do. Muda alone is a mako. Man, what come? 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 Fais l'impôt à Warugal la si kepo ko hamne 2 mireo minga ak nyufi deke. Bo feke ne chi atmi sa kom kom we su na nyar fuka ak nyenti junei dalasi. Mbete wer bu neka dinga am luto lu si nyari junei dalasi. L'impôt a si langourgi di soukande ku ngi lige yoku te reo mi. GRA mwoy bang has bunguri gambia sas ngi rmo feye ku lepo lui l'impôt chi bi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fey kati l'impôt yine Warugal la pour nyu feyi lu nyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Ma Manam, bepa kontrak buwa johe. Tesi bi reo mila nyu to. Kon, hali si kontrak binyen nango to. War nga tiye wanyi ki khayma. Temer bu neka fuka. Bu feke ne kontrak to bi. Deku ti bi reo mi. Bu boba, dinga waro wanyi. Temer bu neka fuka ak juron. Li mwe lempo bu nyu nan. With holding tax on kontrak payment. Li mwe lempo, binga khamne yo mi johe kontrak. Waru gala, nga wul bate ku dem feyiko. Ti maka ni GRA tax office bula gena jege. Bete ti banki GRA jaglel pur fey lempo. 
lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak jurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract bi amul ben contracto buñu téggel feyi lempo bi xana mu fekk né nguri gambia ñoko djégalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense jra di fayeku lempo ngir yokoute rewmi we live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Hello, welcome to Kerfatu. So 2020 has been a turning point uh, when ex unexpectedly the World Health Organization have declared COVID-19 a worldwide pandemic. Uh, most countries have responded drastically. The Gambia's first response or initial response was to lock down schools and we expected that this is going to have an adverse effect on teachers and students especially, but also the, uh, generally the education system. Um, what we have also expected was that for teachers, the government was going to continue to pay their salaries Sorry. so that the effect or the impact would not be as much mm -hmm. as we would have expected. But it's not every teacher that is on a government payroll. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and since we have had so many conversations around COVID-19, for example, how do we continue to implement the preventive measures in order to flatten the curve? We have also discussed on this platform, on several other platforms, platform. how it can impact on the economy. Uh, moving forward and we have seen the civil society organizations we have seen political parties the government itself coming to the aid of people in order to respond to poverty and hunger that could emerge as a result of the lockdowns uh, what we haven't done and which is very important uh, in my opinion is to talk directly to individuals or groups of individuals mm -hmm. who might be suffering in silence who do not have the luxury that some of us have and this group of individuals uh, also included teachers that are teaching in private schools who are not on government's payroll, who may not necessarily be receiving their salaries and they have families to feed. And that is the reason why today we think it's important to have uh, yourself here, um, yes. Ahmed Lamin Fatajo, uh, and also Great Mr. To the Mr. Great. Great uh, Akao Tudoma. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel.
Yeah, I'm Rob. Thank you. Can you can yes. you briefly tell us who you are, what you are into, uh, which institution you're affiliated with? All right. Uh, like I said, I'm Greta Kautudoma. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently the Deputy Director of Academics, Karaba Institute of Administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been in the system, I mean the academic system for some time now, in the Gambia in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, around this country is 2011, and since then I've taught uh, virtually most of the schools in the Gambia, including government owned institutions like GTTIM mm -hmm. and uh, Stratford, where I left before mm -hmm. we came together to co found the Karaba Institution of, uh, Institute of Administration mm -hmm. alongside my good brother here, Mohamed Lami Fatajo. Mm -hmm. So that's all about me. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Great. Uh, Mr. Fatajo, can you kindly do us? Okay, as you time? have already introduced me, <laughs> yeah. then my name is Mohamed Lamin Fatajo. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Director General of Kairaba Institute of Administration. Mm -hmm. I've been in the TVET sector for almost 17 years now, all my life, and I've teach, uh, taught in many schools in the Gambia here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt it, uh, it is necessary for, for us to come here on this platform and discuss about how the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has affected mm -hmm. the private sector, like the private institution in the Gambia. As you just mentioned earlier on, uh, like government, uh, they are not on the government wages. Yeah. So we are also looking at it, how government can support yeah. in kind of release uh, materials or package mm -hmm. to uh, mitigate some of those uh, problems that we are currently facing. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gray. Thank you very much, Mr. Fatajo. First of all, let's, kind, uh, let's discuss how the COVID-19 has affected you guys, uh, particularly those of you who are in the private schools teaching and not receiving your salaries. Uh, I know a lot of people are being affected by this. The response that yeah. we are seeing is yeah. going to people uh, in their households, yeah, but you may not necessarily bene have benefited from this. Yeah, sure. So how have you been dealing with the pandemic? Uh, really, uh, Madam Kamara, it is uh, really tough for yeah. most of uh, the lecturers, especially in the private sector. Because if you look at it, uh, like 70, 60 percent or 65 uh, percent of the lecturers in the private institutions are foreigners. Mm -hmm. Now, the house to hall, house to house uh, food relief or materials is given to Gambians, so few foreigners have been benefited in it. Mm -hmm. So we receive a call from many institutions uh, and uh, primary schools and uh, private primary schools and uh, secondary in the Gambia. Said, can we team up to, to talk to the government mm -hmm. or? the body that is responsible for this relief package, like uh, you mentioned earlier, politicians and some of philanthropists, if they can also turn around and look at us, because teachers are very, very important and vital in national development. Sure. Because when we're talking about this relief, we're talking about the doctors, the police who are at the forefront, it's the teachers mm -hmm. who make them to be there. Because if those teachers are not there teaching in the school, yeah. so you wouldn't have journalists or any other people in to cover. Words, everything begins and yeah, begins, the Yes, teachers. so mm -hmm. now we say charity begins at home. So most of these schools are tuition fee based, you understand? Mm -hmm. Students pay tuition fee, and that tuition fee is also, that's where they are, uh, receive as their enumerations of salaries. Now students are not going to school because of the government restriction of lo lo lockdown. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect many schools to have that uh, 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 financial muscles mm -hmm. to be able to afford to pay their uh, salaries. Mm -hmm. Because some schools are even complaining that their study fees, they have already been exhausted. Mm -hmm. So now, and the lockdown, we don't know when it's going to end, because we know it's 45 days. Yeah. But since March, the, 20, the first uh, state of emergency, that is 21 days, mm -hmm. it has affected because many, uh, it creates a pandemonium because many are afraid. They are saying that because of we need to have a social distance. Mm -hmm. So in the class, you know, we know the size of the class. So you cannot say people like uh, to come for school and whereby they are paying, they are paying student, student fee mm -hmm. and it's really going to affect uh, this, the system because it has been affecting rather. Mm -hmm. So moreover, uh, uh, we are also appealing to government and other philanthropists mm -hmm. to turn around and look at uh, these private teachers in the private uh, schools mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the package is not there. And uh, they are crying at home that even the uh, their landlords are disturbing them in terms of rain pitch mm -hmm. and uh, their utility bills and others. So uh, they are crying for help. In, in a nutshell, that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Mr. Great, uh, we turn back <laughs> to you. Uh, Mr. Fatajo has mentioned that uh, members of your group, uh, those teaching in private schools, since they are not receiving any relief packages as the other groups might have been receiving from government and other philanthropists. When people call you, what sort of complaints do you get from them? Of course, even without being called, you know, because you are in the system. Yeah. Uh, in the system in the sense that uh, 
he who will actually know where it pinches. Mm -hmm. um, since the advent of uh, COVID-19, we understand its impact on all sectors of the economy, mm -hmm. including the education sector, in human impact. Uh, the school is not left out, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not particular to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. It cut across the globe. Of course, it's a global issue. Sure. Uh, be that as it may, it has adverse effects, and its adverse effect is sectional. The private sector is most affected in the sense that, I'm talking about the educational sector, in the sense that even at the lockdown, even the state of emergency or whatever it is, government schools are still you know, doing their best. I mean, government is paying their teachers. Mm -hmm. They take salaries, they take wages and all of that. All their benefits, they are entitled to that benefit. Of mm -hmm. course, that's one of the advantages of you know, <laughs> being with the government. Servant, yeah. yeah, but that, that would not mean that uh, the private sector should be left out because uh, if you talk about the curriculum or the, school, the academic design and all of that, mm -hmm. no private institution you know, offers its own model different from what the, uh, the government approves. Mm -hmm. Of course, that simply means that everybody is rendering the same service. So the impact of uh, COVID-19 is sectoral, but that of education is more pivotal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the essence of this is to actually draw support, mm -hmm. to look to, for the government and you know, uh, philanthropists or other concerned individuals to also turn around and look at the concerns of private institutions and their teachers, mm -hmm. because they're also part and parcel of the uh, national development. Mm -hmm. So if the teachers are not well taken care of, mm -hmm. not that they're not well taken care of, given this situation that we find ourselves, mm -hmm. of course, it will have adverse effects on education when school finally resumes. Mm -hmm. So the cornerstone of this uh, 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 clarion call is for government to also look at individuals should also look at the concerns of the teachers, mm -hmm. particularly the private institutions mm -hmm. who, you know, the basically source is one from, you know, tuition fees and other, you know, majors that are not there now. Yeah. So that's uh, exactly why this uh, uh, invitation important, yeah. this is important. Yeah, I, I agree with you when I was informed about you guys coming and oh. what was, to my surprise, uh, very uh, disturbing was the fact that we never thought about this. Yeah, we course. really never thought about, thought about what could be happening, happening to private, private teachers. teachers yeah. Because in our imagination, oh, government is going to pay teachers. Government is going to, so they are not going to feel the impact as much. That's right. But we forgot that <laughs> there is a specific category a specific of teachers category. who may not be receiving their, their funds. And that's why I think it's important that we have this conversation here. But again, even within this group of, uh, this category of groups that we, we are here to discuss about, there are also two distinct people, a uh, group of people that we need to focus on. There are okay. those who are Gambians, mm -hmm. who we could say have social ties, social that ties. when things are hard, they could turn to, but there are also the um, foreigners uh, who are here with less social ties, if you, uh, if I might say. So if, if there is difficulties that you are facing, we could safely say that it, your difficulties might differ from one another. Uh, right. So from the perspective of those who are foreigners living in the country and teaching in private sector, uh, what distinct problems might you face that uh, non, um, sorry, Gambians might not necessarily face? One well, is, in fact, for one example, of, one in terms of, of rent, one, rentals that you have yes. to pay one, and one of stuff it, like that. One of it has to do with the payment of rent. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, most Gambians don't pay their rent. They don't pay rent because they have attachment, they have, they have their own personal house and all of that. Mm -hmm. But most of the foreigners here, especially those who are in the private institutions, could not afford to build their own house. So they live in a rented apartment. Mm -hmm. And this period, you don't smile to landlord as I don't have money. Don't have money so yeah. one of the major constraints, which uh, is distinct, mm -hmm. is that of uh, house rent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, if there's any other one, it's also you know food material and all of that, mm -hmm. because every Gambian can act easily have his way with the family and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the foreigners, you know, it's difficult for them to co cohabit and, and you know engage in communal feeling and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's also one of the major you know aspect that makes uh, the foreign lecturers or teachers in the private institution mm -hmm. you know different from those in the private uh, uh, Gambians in the private institution. Mm -hmm. And I can also uh, make a point here that. The number of teachers, or uh, be it lecturers or teachers in the country here, mm -hmm. virtually many of them are foreigners, mm -hmm. of course. 
this situation is really affecting many of us. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned the number of teachers and that just reminded me. Is yes. there an association that we're dealing with? Is there, is there an association uh, yes. of private teachers? There is an association of private teachers, uh, even in the TV sector, but it's not that much. Uh, there is no more unification, that much unifi unification okay. the between them. The is not strong? No, it's not strong. Okay. So moreover, most schools are operating in their own. They are not even aware of this. But do we have an idea of how many people we're uh, talking about? Uh, we can say over 200 schools. Okay. 200, you understand? 200 schools, but yes. two, how many yes. teachers are we talking no, about? No, uh, teachers we're talking about, approximately we can talk about, let's say, uh, 1,000 teachers. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, moreover, not only the teachers, because once the teachers are affected, the students are also affected. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you can see the online programs is run for government schools, and because you can see at times some of the schools, their syllabus and the government syllabus. Mm -hmm especially the secondary education, yeah, it differs. Yeah. Some are running these uh, London GC programs. Mm -hmm. And when you come to the TV sector, mm -hmm. you have the tertiary and you have the higher education. Mm -hmm. So you can see that they are also providing it for UTG and other students who are sitting and, and they are, these are Gambians. Mm -hmm. They are in the private sectors, but they are not going. So what are the measures? Governments are also coming in place for those private schools. Yeah, yeah the, the students that are going there because Gambians are going there, mm -hmm. foreigners are going. But moreover, the Gambians are uh, forms the majority of it, mm -hmm. the students that are going. Yeah. So what are uh, government going to put in place in order to, to help those students in time of online programs? Yeah. And coming to the, the relief package that we are talking about uh, in this uh, COVID pandemic uh, issue. Yeah. We'll come to the relief package, but you mentioned something very important here yeah. as yeah. well, is how government is responding in terms of uh, providing online education, online education to yeah. higher education institutions such, yeah. such, such as the UTG, UTG yes. uh, but not necessarily for private institutions. For, for private institutions. And that is affecting Gambians. Of students, course, so. it's affecting. Do you see that as discriminatory? Uh, actually, I don't see it as uh, discriminatory, but maybe they are not that well informed. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of their decision making, mm -hmm. because moreover, uh, all their focus are pointing to a uh, center to G UTG. Mm -hmm. I think uh, government should also uh, be ready at any time of emergency. Mm -hmm. You understand? Emergency situation, not about the COVID. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, in case if, like in 2016, that kind of impasse, so in case such a thing, mm -hmm. a scenario mm -hmm. happens, mm -hmm. you understand? What are we going to do for our people? You understand? For example, there is a flood. You know, Gambian is not a floody area where normally we have this flood and land. Mm -hmm. But when those such a things happen, mm -hmm. what are we going to do for our students? Mm -hmm. So, but if those plans, uh, programs are not planned ahead, mm -hmm. then when we find ourselves in that situation, mm -hmm. it will just become uh, difficult for us to uh, uh, find uh, ways and means how to go about it. Mm -hmm. This online program, many schools will be affected because syllabus will not be completed. Mm -hmm. Some are sitting to these ACCA programs, these six-month programs. Some are sitting to uh, uh, ICM programs. And some have their normal two years or one-year program, mm -hmm. those who are into certain programs. Because we have different durations of programs mm -hmm. in these Tibet institutions, you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, these students are sitting for almost two or three months at home. Mm -hmm. And the exams is like, most of them is June, they sit to the exam. So what are we going to do with those people, those students? Mm -hmm. Even if the government say, okay, they are going to extend the state of emergency for another 45 days. Altogether becomes 90 days. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to do within this t uh, period for the students? Are we going to let them to sit at home and say, let, when the, the lockdown is o over, then they can come again and start? Mm -hmm. we, remember, we have to remember some students, they are, very, they are slow learners. Mm -hmm. So once they, 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 are, they, are, they are not concentrated in their learning, yeah. everything goes yeah. and they have to start fresh. Yeah. And it becomes difficult also because once they resume, the school, the school also will ask for another tuition fee. Yeah. So what the government is going to do? So, so either they're going to solvent to help, mm -hmm. you understand? If not all, they are giving them the full package. But what can they do yeah. to help the private institution? It is very, very, it's, it's a key. Uh, <laughs> as we are having discussion, I can imagine people sitting down and say, but these are private institutions, they are into business, they are making money for them. So why should government come to their aid? But we're talking about students who go to this private uh, institution being Gambian students mm -hmm. and having every right from the government to be uh, giving the support that other universities or other institutions that are public are receiving from them. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I want to direct my question to you with regards to this before we come back to the private teachers and their plight. Uh, the UTG, for example, had initiated on its own uh, to launch an online program. And uh, because of that self-initiation, we have the government coming in to support them financially. Uh, I understand that the Gambia College did the same thing. Is 
is it possible that the private institution might have started to do something like that, but finances may not be forthcoming, and that's the reason why they were not able to One, ahead. One, you have to look at uh, the number of students mm. that are in private institutions. Mm. You also look at the private institutions uh, capital intensive. Mm. Uh, when we talk about private institutions, it is government responsibility to prioritize its affairs, mm. its institutions. But as more facts, it's the choice for a citizen to choose where he or she goes to school. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. But that does not outrightly deny the student some of the privileges that other fellow citizens are enjoying. Now, in response to your question, most private institutions can't afford mm -hmm. some of the facilities that government schools can afford. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, to some extent, there are limitations mm -hmm. to what some private institutions can do. And that has also had drastic effects on some of the positive development that can come. Mm -hmm. Yes, one of the problems here is that uh, there's no uh, formidable body that actually stands mm -hmm. that, okay, this is a body for private institutions that can actually bring about their issues to government attention. Of course, the government might be ready to render certain services to private institutions. But how many times have you taken this issue to government? Before this initiative came, many people are not aware of this. You don't expect the government or every other to think the way you think. But if you have certain reasoning, certain things that you know that is impactful, positively on the society, you bring it about. It's part of why we are here. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the point here is that most private institutions won't be able to afford mm -hmm. to Online uh, a digital uh, you know, study for now. Mm -hmm. But government can do that. Mm -hmm. And again, it does not mean that most students who attend private institutions should also be completely denied of these people. Like he said, mm -hmm. the, the academic collector is the same, both private and public institutions. Mm -hmm. So now we have UTG students who are online mm -hmm. with their program running. Mm -hmm. And some of the private institutions are not operating at all mm -hmm. because they cannot afford the internet facility. Mm -hmm. The answer, yeah. what happened at the end of the day? So we have a situation here where one side is left for the other. Mm -hmm. But I know it is government interest all over the world to mm -hmm. better its priorities, I mean, its facilities. Yeah. So you don't expect government to take the responsibility of private institutions. Mm -hmm. But the private institution is also very impactful. It's part and parcel of you know, development too. Yeah. The students who are going there are also benefiting. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to buttress this very uh, significant point mm. that if governments should come mm. in to support, they are not doing it for the private institutions. They yes. are doing it as their obligation mm. to their citizens, citizens who are attending these institutions. Course, sure. So the way that they are dealing directly with public institutions to offer education yes. to Gambians who attend these schools, mm. they have the same obligation as well to uh, yeah, work right. with private institutions to ensure that their students are not being left out left from the privileges that are being offered. Uh, so that is very clear. So mm. we come back to your plight as yes. teachers in these institutions. Yes, 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 yes. I understand that uh, even though response is not forthcoming from quarters that you would expect it That's to come right. from, but you mm. have organized yourself and you're doing something. Yes. Uh, what, is it, what it is that you're doing yourself? Uh, we are raising funds okay. at uh, all levels. And uh, we also wrote to uh, certain institutions, mm -hmm. but their response is very slow. At our own label, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, made some pledges, mm -hmm. and uh, that pledges, I believe that before end of this week, it will be coming. And uh, we intend to buy food stops for some lecturers in the private institutions mm -hmm. and uh, give to them as a relief package. Mm -hmm. So if some of those uh, uh, letters that we we write to this institution, they respond in time. We intend to buy food stuff like uh, more than 2,000 uh, back of rice mm -hmm. and other cooking stuffs for them so that we can take it to them from one uh, institution to the other institution mm -hmm. because we want the, uh, there will be a fair distribution mm -hmm. so that each school, because we know that each school in the Gambia here in the Tibet sector has a, uh, uh, foreigners and they have Gambians. Mm -hmm. So they will be able to know the number then they will give us the numbers that they have, you understand? So our target is 2,000. So if a school like Stratford is having 50, or Kairaba, or you talk about Smart, is having 65. So we go by the number, and we're going to distribute it equally, the number that is given to us. But we are calling on philanthropists. We are calling on uh, the government of the Gambia to also look back at the private institutions. We know that in this uh, difficult situation, government will not be able to afford all that we need 
but at, like, at least some they could throw and say okay you have this one in this situation because you are a private body as you say that we are entitled to certain uh, privileges like collecting tuition fees mm -hmm. but in as much we are collecting tuition fees from the students yet still uh, those student fees you know that they are not permanent you understand mm -hmm. in a sense that they are not permanent it's not like it's coming mm -hmm. frequently we know how the country is you understand students in the Gambia here they don't normally pay all their tuition fee at, at, at one go at once mm -hmm. you understand they normally pay in instrumental base mm -hmm. and private institutions you are rent you have to pay those kind of rent for the school and the landlord will just come on knocking uh, yeah some are even requesting for two or three years you understand mm -hmm. for you to pay their uh, how to call it a uh, uh, rent fee so this is the probably uh, the period that we are in and we are calling for all philanthropists mm -hmm. Especially people like uh, uh, Barista and Safal, uh, you name few. Mm -hmm. We have seen them; they are supporting. So we are also calling their attention back mm -hmm. towards and say, please, uh, we are uh, requesting for your generosity mm -hmm. for you to help, mm -hmm. so that the private teachers that are in the Gambia, most especially the foreigners, that are they are even my concern. No Gambians have my concern, but the foreigners are also my concern mm -hmm. because they are thousands away, miles away from home. You understand? Mm -hmm. And they're in a foreigner. And Gambia, we know mm -hmm. that we normally cater for the foreigners than our own self. Mm -hmm. Because that's what different, that's why we are called Smiling Course. Mm -hmm. So I believe that on this platform, mm -hmm. many people will try to, to look back and say, uh, let us help this uh, teachers association, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. In the plight of uh, uh, this uh, pandemic that is, uh, is, is going on, and it has a serious impact on education, mm -hmm. and especially the, 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 the Tibet sector. Mm -hmm. Because there you don't have a study fee. Yeah. But like the secondary and basic, basic education, as I te I'm telling you, that they have a study fee. Mm -hmm. But most of the time they use that study fee. Because just yesterday I even received three calls at uh, 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. They were calling me, they called me, and some of, some, one of them was even crying, telling me that, uh, how do you feel to be a foreigner in, 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 in another country? Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean? He said that uh, your government is catering for you, you people. You can see that you are driving your car, you are going, uh, you are, everything is okay. I said, no. I said, but we are also trying, we are coming up something. Mm -hmm. He said, what thing? I said, tomorrow we'll be at Kerfat. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. We are raising funds for you people. He said, his landlord is even casing him out mm -hmm. about rate fees. And also the family is suffering because they don't even have a cup of rice. Say, ah, this is serious. Say, we are going to Kerfatu and uh, we're going to have that panel discussion. And we hope government will also do something mm -hmm. in the line with the, with the line ministry. Yeah. And some of the philanthropists also will come in and do something. Okay. Yes. So the pledges that are coming, where are they coming from? Are they coming from other private teachers or from somewhere? They are, are coming, from, they the are coming from an individual like these ex students. You understand? Okay. So one can say, I can, okay, I can offer a bag of rice. As students from private schools? Yes, from private schools. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that we, whom okay. that have, uh, we, we, we taught mm -hmm. and are now working in, in, uh, in government or the, or the, or the private sector. Mm -hmm. So we used to call them and say, hey, look around. You, because of us, now you are in this position. Because we train you, mm -hmm. you understand, <laughs> to become what you are now. They say, oh, yes. Then some of them will say, okay, one bag of rice a gallon of oil. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we want to gather together and give it back. Okay. Yes. So how much have you raised so far? As for now, I think we have raised uh, three bags of rice. Okay. Yes. And how much are you expecting? Uh, well, uh, let me not be optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can be optimistic as well. Uh, okay, let me, let, me, let me be optimistic too. Be optimistic, yeah. yes. Because, uh, because mo why I'm saying that let me not mm -hmm. be optimistic? Because most of times they will promise then they will, it, it will not turn in. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why I use the word. But, uh, no, but my, the, the question I'm asking is what is your benchmark? Whether you have it or not, you know that this is what we the want benchmark. to acquire. Yeah. Okay, the benchmark is like uh, 100 bucks of rice. 100 bucks of rice. Yes, that's oh. our benchmark. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so turning back to you, the fundraising that you're doing, if anybody wants to support, what channels should they use? Do you have numbers where people can call, you have an account where people can pay into, or you have a GoFundMe link uh, that has been set up? What do you have where people can reach you to pay? Uh, of course, into? right now we have uh, an account already with the First Bank of uh, FBN, First Bank of Nigeria, mm -hmm. where we intend to, to give out to who will be Mm -hmm. philanthropists, those mm -hmm. who would like to support this initiative, mm -hmm. who have an account. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also intend to also reach out outside the country also, mm -hmm. particularly those who have the concerns mm -hmm. to also render certain service to the private sectors. Mm -hmm. These are some of the modalities that we are put together right now. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we think that we do. There's an account mm -hmm. already in place, mm -hmm. and uh, we also have uh, sat and decided, okay, 
when these things start coming out, a, a committee will be set mm -hmm. across institutions, selected body. We know ourselves mm -hmm. and try to see how we can, okay, come with this committee. Okay, you are responsible for this, mm -hmm. you are responsible for this, you go for this and you go for that. Yeah. That's what's on ground. Okay. Yeah. So are there numbers where they can of reach course, you to? Of course, yeah. of course, there are numbers. Facebook page. Hmm. Uh, because numbers. once we started, uh, there's uh, information and info that we share on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because this go for... Uh, you have a Facebook page. What is it called? Uh, it's, it's called Kairaba Institute of Administration on that Facebook. Mm -hmm. But on our individual Facebook, because uh, we have... Uh, on our platform, we have more than 200 people that are following us. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, we even share it on our page. Mm -hmm. And the telephone numbers are here. But equally, we can also... Uh, uh, give you our telephone numbers on this platform yeah. so that people who are willing to, to support. I think this is a very good opportunity yes. to P share yeah, your yeah, full that's numbers what I'm for, uh, for people to reach you directly yeah, because that, that's what works for yeah, most People who are ready to support, you mm -hmm. can call this number 799-702-7886-7886. You can call this line, these numbers, mm -hmm. and uh, whoever you reach, that uh, I think is in the safe hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can also call this uh, commune number 662 mm -hmm. for your support, and uh, any support is welcome. If it's one dollar, see that you, are, you, have, you have the good intention to support, it's for the teachers, for the nation. The Gambia, we know this thing since independence. We have been supporting uh, our, our lecturers because I remember in those days, mm -hmm. at times, and uh, when I was in the province. Even the foreign lecturers, when they come, our people will give them free rooms, mm -hmm. free food to eat. So now we are in this situation and uh, we extend our hands mm -hmm. to, to the foreigners. And uh, that's, I believe that people will come and uh, the pledges also that have been pledged, and uh, they will come forward mm -hmm. and, uh, in the due course. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that uh, thank, uh, to, to, to thank them yeah. uh, for those kind of uh, good pledges that they have already uh, 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 willing to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So here is another strategy that uh, I hope that you might have thought about uh, is the many philanthropies that have already started raising funds. For example, there is this national COVID-19 food drive that yes. ASAFAL is involved with and yes. Lala Toure, one of our students from the UTG, is UTG. involved with. Yes. Uh, there is another philanthropist called Yunus Haidara who is also raising funds and buying foodstuffs and distribu distributing them. But we also know that uh, the government have started distributing food items. Uh, political parties like the UDP has also started raising funds. Uh, Citizens Alliance say they are going to give cash uh, yes. money. Have you reached out to these people directly so that you can explain your, your problems to them and see if they will be willing to help directly? Uh, Is that something that you consider? Not, not at now. Uh, mm -hmm. We are trying to reach to SFL, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to locate his place and even have the contact, but uh, it's still not possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also try to reach to Eunice Hydra. Mm -hmm. uh, we can still locate him. But uh, for uh, the political party that you made mention, UDP, mm -hmm. we uh, realized that they are now at uh, uh, LRR or CRR in, the, in that region, mm -hmm. uh, giving our support. Mm -hmm. So we are waiting for them. When the team comes back, we also will approach them at their bureau mm -hmm. and some other philanthropists, as you made mention. Mm -hmm. Because location to locate them at times becomes a problem. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. But once we can locate them, I think it will be easier for us to, to uh, meet with them and uh, discuss uh, the, some of these issues and tell them that how they can help in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that okay. will be okay. All right, so beyond uh, support in food items, because what I understand from here now is that you want to help the private teachers by subventing their, their, their food consumption. Mm -hmm. Are there other forms of support? We mentioned rental here, for example. Yes. Uh, from a macro perspective, what would you expect government or any other uh, institution that your, your association may be affiliated with to support or to, um, what would you expect the government to do moving forward in order that your problem can be alleviated? Of course, we've always believed that uh, both private and public institutions are government-owned institutions. Mm -hmm. The nomenclature private is all about uh, just uh, something that is there. Yeah, we are partners. Uh, we are partners. Yeah. So yeah. there should be a kind of a collaborative, mm -hmm. a kind of partnership between private and public institutions at all time in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue here is that, uh, yes, government will be able to take full fledged responsibilities for private institution. Mm -hmm. But in the areas of relief materials, mm -hmm. in the areas of house rent and all of that, mm -hmm. yeah, it is not possible for the government to also approach a uh, landlord and say, hey, we are calling on you to drop your house rent and all of for this private institution and all of that. Mm -hmm. No. I was saying that 
Yes, sometimes relief cannot actually address all your concerns. Mm -hmm. But when one aspect is addressed, it can also help to better the other aspects. Mm -hmm. Why well, I'm saying that? Yes, if you are confronted with the payment of house rents mm -hmm. and also confronted with the issue of you know, having food to eat and all of that, mm -hmm. if government comes to your aid in the area of providing relief material in the aspect mm -hmm. of food, yeah. of course, you'll be able mm -hmm. to also take uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> enough if responsibility right. yeah. to, to, okay, let me see what I can do to talk to my landlord. Of mm -hmm. course, most landlords in the Gambia are very understanding, mm -hmm. so you can also approach them. The point here is that government cannot take all the responsibility of private institution, mm -hmm. but it should be able to address one part of the, you know, the, the concerns mm -hmm. in terms of... Uh, we, we want to get into the specifics. Uh, I think we're speaking to the government, like we're speaking yes. to an audience. Yes. Uh, if we expect them to help or to give support, we need to be very particular about what specific, specific. support do we want from them. I think, I, I think for the government can support in terms of house rent, rentage, okay. you understand? Mm -hmm. For uh, the philanthropists, we have seen them, they are distributing food items. Mm -hmm. They can support in terms of food items. Because okay. I seen men mention that earlier on, that the government will be able to cover all. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that. But at least the little package that they can, we expect that one to help, to come and help in, mm -hmm. in our aid. Mm -hmm. Like the house rent, we want the government to support the house rent. Mm -hmm. The philanthropists and other individuals, mm -hmm. they can support food package. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. So uh, I understand that uh, the private teachers association is not very strong at this point in time mm, it's not uh, very strong. It's not. exactly so mm. what are the lessons that you guys have drawn from this and moving forward what initiatives could be in store uh, it's the lesson that's what we are going to tell the private institution let's come together and unite mm. you understand uh, this uni uh, unity is bringing a lot of uh, uh, missed opportunities for us mm. because we cannot engage government you understand, in time of, even not in this time of uh, uh, pandemic situation that we are, mm -hmm. we can engage government in a lot of things, you understand. Because as he made mention of it, when it come to, comes to time of curriculum development, government needs us, it, they call us. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we are part of that one. In any type of standard development, we are part of it. Now, why can't we come together and unite? Because this is the interest of the, the nation, the student that, would be, that we, uh, we are teaching, you understand. Not our own personal interest, you understand. Let's leave that one aside mm -hmm. and look and say that, okay, our unification will help the Gambia to move on, you understand? And the education system of the Gambia also will go, so that it will be in the same pinnacle of that, like Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, you name all the other countries. But here in the Gambia, you can see even coming together, for us to say, agree on harmonization of program, at times it's become a problem. And the ministry, definitely the ministry is trying. Mm -hmm. NACA as well, is, they are also trying. But the problem is we, really the, the private institutions, at times, for this harmonization, because we want to draw, uh, how to call it, uh, uh, ideas from maybe Jupiter or Saturn, you understand? Mm -hmm. But we, it's this agree to agreement. Let's come to town and say, okay, hey, this got to stop, you understand? For the betterment of who? For this, our students, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. Let's have put all this, the difference that we have, because as of now we are saying, there is nobody that is coming forward to uh, request for a relief package for private institutions. Mm -hmm. Because if there's a unity, we, we, we will not even be here, you understand, in the first place, mm -hmm. for, uh, 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 that, uh, for this uh, fundraising program. But uh, as of now, I cannot even tell you that who is the chair of the teachers' association on the TV sector. Mm -hmm. Because there are problems everywhere and there. And we don't expect the ministry or the NACA to come and say, OK, come together and unify. They are watching us. Mm -hmm. So when we are serious, they will come to our aid. Okay. So we are using this opportunity for us to come together. Mm -hmm. It's not about this thing. We may have different different programs, uh, pro problems at homes. Mm -hmm. Once we are united, those problems problems can be solved without the intervention of the government. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my uh, call for the uh, private institutions is for us to test, uh, take this pandemic as an, uh, uh, a lesson, mm -hmm. a learn lesson for each and everyone mm -hmm. that after this, what do we do? The after effect, that's the most important. The, the impact it's going to have on the economy. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because moreover, if the students come, you don't expect students to come with tuition fee. You understand? Most countries will be facing with economic recessions. So what do we do as a body? After the, uh, the aftermath of the pandemic, mm -hmm. how do we approach government? How do we approach international organizations like UNDP, UNICEF? Mm -hmm. They are there, they, the EU, they want a phone. You understand? But if we are not... Uh, if we are not together as a body, mm -hmm. we are we are going to lose it. 
you understand, we'll be losing a lot of revenue. And most of the time, government will be giving it to the public sector, like GTTI, MDI, UTG, GTMI. So why, the, the, why not the private sector? Because government did not see, at least, we are together, we are united. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling on all private sectors in the Gambia mm -hmm. that let's unite together for the betterment of our students. Okay. Yeah. So we have heard from Mr. Fatajo that one of the lessons that you guys have learned is the importance, in, importance of organizing yourselves uh -huh. so that you can address your issues as a collective body rather than as fragmented individuals. Uh, are there additional lessons that you guys have learned from this already? Yes, of, of okay. course. Uh, if I may position very well, mm -hmm. I would like to say that the world was never prepared for the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the lessons in the first place is preparedness. Mm -hmm. That uh, both policymakers mm -hmm. in the educational sector, economic sector, uh, you know, economic sector, everybody should be prepared at all time mm -hmm. for the inevitabilities mm -hmm. like the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yes, you cannot actually approach government as an individual and expect effective results. But you need a body. Mm -hmm. Unionism is encouraged in order to actualize certain, you know, projects. Like in the Gambia, at the moment, you cannot actually have a formidable house, uh, body that you can call uh, the private institutions, association, all of that. Mm -hmm. One of the lessons is that if we had had it before now, mm -hmm. we'll be able to address some of the issues that we're bringing forth today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of this, of course, if you have learned, you also, it also calls for you to go back to drawing board and do the needful, mm -hmm. except you have not learned. So it is not considered as a mistake anyway. It is a lesson that we have learned. We expect that this lesson should transform our existence mm -hmm. in the sense that we should be able to use this opportunity to come together. Yes, the initiative actually came uh, so that we can also create a platform mm -hmm. for private institutions to be a body that can mm -hmm. come up with policies they can also come up with a way of trying to put the body together that can respond to certain needs that may, may come. Mm -hmm. Just like, apart from the pandemic, academically, mm -hmm. the private institutions need to harmonize certain things to also compete with the government institution. Mm -hmm. But when an individual institution is running its own, mm -hmm. the competition will not be stiff. I tell you this. In as much as government institutions are functioning, there are certain persons who prefer to go to private institutions because of certain privileges. Mm -hmm. But where the body is not formidably put together, formed, it becomes difficult for you to realize some of these agendas. Mm -hmm. So the lesson is we have learned. Now it is on us on us to come together to form a formidable body so that we can address some of our needs, some of our challenges, mm -hmm. either with the government or any other institution. Okay, so uh, basically, I will summarize that every lesson mm -hmm. is a prelude to another step. And when you take that step, it should be able to better you from where you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. So the lessons we have learned from COVID-19 is that we are not actually prepared and we should be prepared at all times. And preparedness is togetherness. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what. Yeah. Have you run out of cash power? Do you want to transfer funds to your family or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank? Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services. Funds transfer, cash power purchase, forex rates inquiries. Mobile airtime top up, mini statement, balance inquiry. TBL app is the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash at Trust Bank. We bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trust Bank Limited. Proudly Gambian. Better and stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. 
With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs, provided by professional, experienced and ever-smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services, by far the best in the country, give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Je <laughs> Uh, Mr. Great, and thank you so much, thank Mr. Fatajab. My final remarks will be to appreciate uh, Kefatu mm -hmm. for considering it very important to receiving us. I, I recall when we came here, mm -hmm. and uh, it was initiative that actually came. We knew that uh, it, it's not everybody that thinks the way you think, mm -hmm. but we believe that there are quite a number of people who would like to actually cater or come to the ace of private institutions. But who brings the idea? Who brings the, Do you expect people to think for you? Mm -hmm. So this idea came. The moment we sold it to, to her, Kefatu, she mm -hmm. bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, hook, like, and sink out. Here we are today. Yeah. The, the point is that uh, it is an awareness we are creating. Mm -hmm. uh, this awareness uh, calls for response for those private institutions like us who have been in the system and uh, need some of the relief. It should not be sectionalized. It should also be centralized. It should be given to certain persons who also are part and parcel of the developmental process. Thank you. Uh, I, I Thank understand you. why Kefatu brought the idea because when she brought it to me as well, it was an old moment for all of us. We're like, <laughs> how comes we didn't think about this? How comes we didn't know that these people could be suffering or are suffering in silence? Exactly. And I hope that those of you who are listening to this program or who are viewing this program would have the same realization that there are in fact people who might be suffering in silence and we have an obligation to reach out to everybody uh, indiscriminately so uh, again uh, i thank you for coming thank here to you share very much. It's a pleasure. to share with us uh, thank you but also much. that uh, the public have heard you and that they will they will come to your aid so that is it for this edition of the kerfato show i thank you very much <laughs>